Welcome back. I'm Barry Craig. Judge James Hillary Mulligan in 1902 penned an immortal poem, the last line of which goes, and politics is the damnedest in Kentucky. My guest today will tell us that Western Kentucky politics is the damnedest or maybe used to be. He is George Humphreys. He is Extended Campus Director for Madisonville Community College based in Central City. And he's going to talk about his new book that he is proposing on Western Kentucky politics. Welcome to the program. Well, thank you. It's good to see you again, Barry. It's it been is. A long, we, many years. We were at Murray State about 10 years ago, <laughs> <laughs> which will make us good politicians. That's right. right that's like right. That. <laughs> so how would uh, Western Kentucky politics give us a little flavor of, uh, or just tell us basically what your book will be about. Well, it's, um, I'm going to be dealing with Western Kentucky politics since the New Deal, and I'm going to take a good look at, uh, at the region, and uh, I'm part of the reason for writing it uh, is Western Kentucky is often overlooked, uh, particularly from those who are writing in Lexington and um, Louisville, whatever. The uh, Golden Triangle. The Golden Franklin. Triangle. Uh, we're often, if we're, if we're talked about, we're sort of lumped in with Eastern Kentucky, as um, rural Kentucky or agrarian Kentucky. And, you know, I frequently want to say there's not a heck of a lot in common uh, between uh, uh, eastern Kentucky, the upland part of the state, mm -hmm. and the lowland um, part of the state, other than they're rural mm -hmm. um, and not part of the Golden Triangle, as you exactly, said. Exactly. But uh, western Kentucky politics are, are, are certainly unique. Uh, I like to, you know, you remind me that. Uh, uh, Doc Beecham, uh, the uh, sort of political kingmaker from Logan County, yes. like to say, you know, people in other par other counties like to play at politics, and uh, folks in Logan County and certainly other parts of Western Kentucky worked at it, <laughs> 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 to say the least. Yes, yes. Uh, let's begin first by defining what is Western Kentucky. There is wide disagreement on yes. that. Yes. Um, and, and in fact, uh, we were talking earlier today, um, you know, when I first started looking at it, and I said, well, okay, you know, divide the state up, the Golden Triangle, Eastern Kentucky, Western Kentucky, where's the line? And I've never really seen that line clearly drawn. Now, uh, in, in, in the uh, General Assembly, you know, which is one place I look, uh, the West Kentucky Caucus, yeah. there is one, and it's anything west of I-65. Well, um, a pretty broad definition. Yeah, um, so that would take in Elizabeth Town, of course, it goes right up into Louisville, and um, uh, you know I have a hard time identifying or seeing commonality between um, Elizabeth Town and Paducah. Mm -hmm. um, so I pushed the line, um, you know, obviously uh, west of that, um, then found that that uh, that people down in, uh, say, Warren County, Bowling Green consider themselves South Central. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, said, we're not part of Western Kentucky. And I said, well, then you need to change the name of the university right. that right. sits here. And I've even had some people in, in the Jackson Purchase say it's not part, or they're not part of West Kentucky. And I said, well. So what are we then? <laughs> Just the Jackson Far Purchase? Western Kentucky. Deep Western Kentucky. Far Western. Yeah, far, Western Kentucky. far Western Kentucky. is what they yeah. refer to. Yeah. Well, anyway, I did finally um, draw a line. And right now I take it from the uh, east side of Breckenridge County, down through uh, the east side of Ohio, Butler County, uh, uh, Warren County, and Simpson County, and call that Western Kentucky. Uh, I, I wanted to keep, um, put in Barron County uh, for some good reasons, because I'm dealing with the rise and fall of the Gem Democratic Rock of Gibraltar. And, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, of course, Barron County, one of its uh, major political figures is Louis Nunn, mm -hmm. who, you know, mm -hmm. so I may, I may, you know, decide mm -hmm. to put in right. Barrett County. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I, ca yeah, I guess you can define Western Kentucky pretty much any way you want to, um, but that's going to mm -hmm. be my, mm -hmm. my definition. So you start with the New Deal, mm -hmm. and obviously you would devote quite a bit of ink to Alvin Barkley. Yes. Uh, what can you tell us that you've discovered insightful about Alvin Barkley? Oh, gosh. Uh, um, insightful um, you know I, and I I'm not sure I can rehash you know because he had such a long long career uh, but it's 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 almost unimaginable I say people that 
I start with Alvin Barkley, and a, a you know, very strong New Dealer. I had one fellow who was um, Attorney General from, uh, you know, oh, Joe M. Ferguson. He was Attorney General under, uh, under uh, uh, Happy Chandler during his second administration who called Barkley a, um, a Southern politician. And, uh, you know, I just said, I just don't, don't see no. that. He's a, he's a New Deal politician. Right. You know, a strong FDR progressive figure. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, you know, you contrast him with, say, Rand Paul, who, mm -hmm. um, you know, of course you have, you know, some other people like Wendell Ford, um, more moderate uh, Democrats, and then you have somebody like Rand Paul from Bowling Green, um, you know, so the region changes a lot mm -hmm. in politics. And you look at Barkley's career, how long it yes. was. Oh, yeah. the, uh, now, I always like to point out, that he was born in Graves County. Yeah. In the town yeah. of the Lowe's. Commun Lowe's. Qu well, actually, Wheel. Wheel, the that's community right. of Wheel. Yeah. And uh, he moved to McCracken County, and that's where he became yeah. a lawyer and got his start. But you look at this fellow, he climbs the ladder. He's a congressman. Yeah. He's a U.S. senator. He's a Senate majority leader. Yeah. And then becomes vice president. That's a huge career. Yes. Right. And you don't see that many politicians anymore. Now, of course, Mitch McConnell's been in the Senate for quite a while. But uh, he was judge of uh, uh, Jefferson County before that. But this yeah. man has, was in Washington for, gosh, well, from Wilson to um, through Truman. He was, and, and, and even even in Eisenhower, he right. dies when he returns. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And uh, so, what was the secret? I know they call him the Iron Man. Yeah. But, but what was the secret to his success to being elected so many times? Do you think he was just a you know he was a inveterate um, campaigner? Uh, I, I kind of you know, talking about the Iron Man you know, aspect, uh, you know, he could, he was a good stump speaker, probably not, you know, on the same par maybe with, uh, with Happy Chandler, but certainly he could hold his own. Um, he was a, he was a, uh, he was a person who could unite. Uh, I think he was a uniter, um, even though he would be, uh, been identified with the uh, um, Lafoon, um, uh, Ray, Clements faction, but he could uh, unite all aspects of the Democratic Party. Um, I, I always loved, uh, you know, during the, con uh, when, when Conway ran for um, Senate last time, he, he took a lot of abuse because he would take his Starbucks coffee into a cafe, <laughs> and people didn't like that. And I thought, Alvin Barkley would never have done that. Exactly. You know, he would, he yep. would have had, you know, stop at 20 places, and right. every place he would probably right. drink right. a cup of coffee. It's a, it's a whole different style of politics. Yeah. It, it yeah. is. And we were talking earlier, too, and you mentioned stump speakers. And, of course, Barkley and Chandler were outstanding stump speakers, as were all successful Kentucky politicians. But they were organizers, too. Yes. You know, I think that uh, that was, a, you know, um, a part of the politics of those days that um, they had – you know, it was a machine, mm -hmm. um, and they went into the counties and knew all, all the people that needed to, you know, who controlled the votes. It's funny that you had mentioned that, of course, both of us being Murray State grads from a little farther back than 10 years, yeah, but yeah. we won't go any further than that. Yeah. Well, um, it was called Murray Teachers College. Well, <laughs> Murray State Normal School, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as opposed to Abnormal School. Right. I always love that title. Yeah. Um, when I was a grad student way back in the 70s, uh, Harry Lee Waterfield donated his mm -hmm. papers to Murray right. State, which I'm sure you'll be working with. Yes, you do yeah, I have. There is a marvelous binder, ring binder in there, that has in it the name of all the county judges, all the local officials in various counties. Uh -huh. So if I'm uh, Harry Lee Waterfield going into uh, Logan County or oh, an eastern Kentucky county, Carter County, let's say, I flip it open, here's the judge, his wife, his kids. I go in there, well, hey, John, how you doing? How's Martha and how are those boys yeah. going to UK? Yeah. That's great. That's organization. Yeah. Politicians don't do that a whole lot anymore, do they? No, no. Um, you know, since John Y. Brown, obviously, you know, that's been the big change in politics in the state is that you don't have that, you know, media's changed, the whole world has changed. But, uh, you know, with John Y. Brown, you just bypass that. You have enough money to do, you know, spend, you know, get do all the TV, the radio, mm -hmm. you know, um, that that changed things. But you know, speaking of Harry Lee Waterfield, and and I, I've come to appreciate him a great deal more. It's rather sad that uh, uh, he had so much to offer, but never, uh, you know, of course he was lieutenant governor mm -hmm. two times, two times speaker of the house. Um, 
and I, I think he can be overlooked in the politics of his day. Um, he just uh, he he had he came up against in 1947 um, a you know a very you know talk about organizing. Um, Earl Clements um, was a better organizer. I think that no question that uh, Waterfield was a better stump speaker. Um, you know, but Clements was the superb um, organizer, um, fundraiser, mm -hmm. and so you know, in that particular gubernatorial election, mm -hmm. Clements won, and and um, and then I guess in in '63, um, uh, or excuse me, '59. Uh, you know, when the, the next best chance that Waterfield had to win the election comes up against Burke Combs and Clements again. <laughs> right. Yeah. And ends up running yeah. second in the Democratic yeah. primary. Yeah. Uh, in your research, uh, you've been interviewing a number of folks around the area. Who are some of the uh, people you've interviewed? Oh, uh, um, let's see. From this area, uh, certainly I've, you know, um, I've talked to uh, uh, Julian Carroll. Oh, yes. And um, you know, had a, had a very nice interview with him. Um, and of you course, know, he, he's interesting in that that Julian Carroll was so identified with Western Kentucky. Yeah. He's from Heath, far Western Kentucky. Exactly, far Western Kentucky from Heath. Yeah. And now he's a state senator from Frankfort. Yeah. Um, in talking to him, does he still maintain his Western Kentucky oh, yes. roots? Yeah, he's yeah. a, he's a oh, sure. expatriate up there in oh, yeah. Franklin County. Of course, there's a lot of people like that. Henry Ward. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, yes. another, yes. another uh, uh, you know, one of the interesting things about far Western Kentucky is there was a feeling there for years that, uh, um, you know, well, okay, so uh, uh, Alvin Barkley's from here, but, you know, never, the, the, nobody from this part of the country ever won the governor's race and that was really the the important race mm -hmm. um, in those days and you know you had Harry Lee Waterfield like we talked you just mm -hmm. discussed mm -hmm. who ran and mm -hmm. lost Henry Ward mm -hmm. uh, who would have made a fine governor uh, everybody tells me that uh, he made a fine governor if if he could only have been appointed <laughs> <laughs> you know he was highway commissioner remember yes yeah, yeah he, he uh, oh he was a you yeah. know he was a a strong figure one of the funniest things of course he wrote for the paducah sun yes Democrat, that's right that's right and i remember reading a story he wrote several years ago about discussing about who's going to be in which committee and he said such as and this reporter on this committee <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i thought that's a that's yeah. a real personal style of journalism yeah uh, but uh you know so but Julian Carroll was the, I guess, the first and only yes, um, Jackson, governor. From Jackson purchased governor. Right, 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 right. But the feeling was that there, there was no possibility of somebody from this area actually winning the governor's race. So, yeah, yeah. And that, uh, any uh, outstanding lawmakers you've talked to or, or, or researched, for example, you mentioned Ruby Lafoon from the from well, Madisonville. Yes. Um, well, I, you know, of course, talked to uh, recently. I talked to Don Blandford, former oh, speaker right. sure. from up in Davis County, and uh, Jody Richards, who's a Warren from, from Warren right. County, uh, also another speaker. Uh, you know, a number of state legislators. Uh, you know, former House members, current House members. So, um, I've probably done in the neighborhood of about thirty to forty interviews, um, and of course, people like. Uh, uh, Al Smith. Oh yeah. Who uh, uh, a real observer. A real uh, yeah yeah. And, and, he, and by the way, he's got a, his um, first first volume of his memoirs are about oh, to come out. That should be wonderful. Yeah yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. great Logan County uh, uh, newsman who went on to uh, uh, success at KET. Oh, comment on Kentucky. Kentucky. Yes, sure sure. Yeah. Now of course you, we were talking earlier. This is not going to be an oral history. Of you, no. So you'll be doing. You'll be getting dusty, getting into the archives and looking at old newspapers and yes. records and that sort of thing. Too. Right, and I, I, I really do want to uh, relate the politics back to what it, what, what occurs in the region. Um, you know, uh, in terms of the development of the regions, the electrification, um, development of the highways, uh, 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 you know, just education, um, institutions. Uh, if you think of of Western Kentucky in the 1930s, there was, you know, really uh, the land between the lakes, uh, um, Lake Barkley, uh, Kentucky Lake, uh, all of that didn't exist. Right. Um, and uh, uh, we were looking at a, 
1931 roadmap well, that I showed you this morning. Uh, I've got to have a copy of that show to my students. It, it's, it's just incredible how many dirt roads yeah. there were, not gravel, but yeah. dirt. Well, this a lot of people talk about this area as being very isolated, um, you know, and that's, you know, with, if, if there was discussion of Western Kentucky, it was usually cast in a negative way in terms of being socially and intellectually and uh, economically backward or, right. st or, or stagnated. Right. And uh, I'm not sure I feel that way. I, I, in fact, I don't think that's, that's entirely, entirely accurate because, uh, um, you know, there's no doubt that the roads uh, made it difficult to get to Frankfurt and, you know, people here probably tend to look more to Memphis and, mm -hmm. they um, did. and St. Louis mm -hmm. than they did to Frankfurt. But uh, um, there were colleges. I mean, you look at somebody like Alvin Barkley, um, you know, there were two colleges yeah. in, in a little town like Clinton. Marvin College. Yeah. Right. Barkley yeah. swept here. Now, I, I'm not saying that they were Harvard. Right. But uh, they were at least, there was at least a, 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 a re people recognized the importance of a higher education. Yeah, if you look, you know, one of the fascinating things about that time, and, you know, pretty much those colleges were dying out by the 1930s, but if you look around the region in, uh, around the First World War, there were, you know, there were probably 30 private colleges. There were. You uh, know. Well, there was well, one in, in Mayfield. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was there a Cumberland College in Princeton, and uh, there were oh, several yeah. little schools that people would go and get a higher education. Yeah, it was kind of like railroads. That, you know, one yeah. of the things if you wanted to do, uh, promote, your, promote your town, you know, boost your, 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 your community, you got mm -hmm. to try to get a, you know, a post office and, uh, you know, a railroad uh, depot and and a college or two. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right, right. Of course, most of those died, you know, because yeah. there was no state support Correct. back then for right. those, those right. institutions. Um, obviously, the Democratic Gibraltar, mm -hmm. that was a term that goes back before the Civil War, was so intensely Democratic and remained so for many, many years. Uh, that's obviously the biggest change politically. Uh, in Western Kentucky, a lot of people still vote Democratic in local elections, but they vote Republican yeah. in state and national elections. Mm -hmm. Um, that's got to be the biggest trend you've noticed in this. Uh, uh, at the, uh, you know, strictly politics, yes, that, uh, that is definitely the case. And, uh, you know, I, 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 you could probably track this back to the, uh, to the 1950s with, uh, uh, you know, civil rights that starts back with the, at least with the Brown decision, um, you know, the desegregation of, of public schools, um, the region, more or less was slower than maybe the rest of the state, and there were, in some cases, like over in uh, in uh, uh, Webster mm -hmm. and uh, and Union counties, right. actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, there was violent resistance. violent resistance mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. Happy Chandler was forced to call out the National Guard mm -hmm. to protect the students who, on their own, um, you know, uh, tried to register for for schools at that point, mm -hmm. but. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you go on into, you know, the the so-called wedge issues of right. of, uh, of today. Uh, one of the things that I thought think is 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 really kind of interesting is, um, and I, and I do want to get this is ERA. Um, I remember that well. Yeah. Equal Rights Amendment. Yeah, and Kentucky uh, surprisingly um, ratified ERA right. in 1972, and. Um, uh, you know, in 78, after uh, several years of work, and largely coming out of Western Kentucky, there was a popular populist revolt. It, there in, was, uh, you know, from from women, right. particularly. Yeah, you the know, Eagle and Forum they were called. Uh, uh, were they, in yeah, fact, they, one, they were a, a, and one of their strongest supporters, if memory serves, was State Senator Richard Weisenberger of Mayfield, who was a Democrat. And, uh, and uh, Lloyd, Lloyd Clapp. Lloyd Clapp. Yeah, and it, it centered in, it, in, it, it did. in Mayfield. And, and of course, Butch Burnett, who was a yeah. very conservative Democrat from Fulton. Yeah. You're right, and I remember that well. Yeah. That, uh, I mean, uh, hundreds and perhaps thousands of women went to Frankfurt and lobbied. Against it. Against exactly. it. And, uh, uh, you know, people who in 72 voted to ratify in 78 turn around because of, uh, uh, s you know, pressure from their constituents voted to rescind it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. so, uh, but, you know, you go on to, you know, certainly abortion and, you know, the uh, guns issue and, 
uh, but what, 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 one, of, uh, one of my union buddies calls them the three G's, God, guns, and gays. Yes. And that's, that, those are the wedge issues. Yeah. Uh, another Although, th- you know, if you talk to politicians, either side, I think you'll find that, um, you know, as, you know, Democrat or Republican oh, in, in Kentucky, Western Kentucky, yes. they're conservative. They're, 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 they are. And, and in fact, in, in many cases, uh, you take the party label off and you can't tell. I mean, yeah. both of them just covet the, the National Rifle Association yeah. endorsement. Yeah. Yeah. One issue that, that, I'm, that is, the, is being debated is you go back, of course, the Rock of Gibraltar was the first congressional district, yes. which was Democratic forever, going back before the Civil War. Yes, correct. The question that everyone, uh, I like to debate with people is, do you think the district has realigned, that Ed Whitfield has turned this the old first Gibraltar into a Republican district? I'm not sure that Ed Whitfield has, um, but it has realigned, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the things that, that, that did take place, um, you know, and currently the, you know, the legislature, General Assembly, is considering redistricting mm-hmm. right now. In the 1990s, when they went through that process, um, you know, one of the things that happens in Western Kentucky is population has just not kept up with the other parts of the mm-hmm. state. So the first district and then the second district have 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 grown. You know, it's taken in more more um, parts of the state. In the case of the first district, there were some who thought that um, um, that uh, Carol Hubbard should have taken in um, um, Davis County. Right. Um, now I talked to Don Blanford the other day, and of course he was speaker at the time, and there was no consideration in his mind <laughs> that Bill Natcher was going to, um, you know, be this this you know Davis County is going to be in the second district. Well, Bill Natcher was chairman of the Appropriations Committee, mm-hmm. and Davis County was trying to build a bridge, had other things in mind, and so um, you know the long and short of it is the first district instead of going up and picking up some, you know, more democratic leading um, parts of the state went, went uh, east along oh, the right. Tennessee border um, and picked up more, more Republican leaning Which, which the Democrats refer to the scorpion's tail. Yes. Uh, yeah. But you know, you look at the first district, it goes all over to, to Adair County. Oh yeah. Columbia, Kentucky. Yeah, and, it's five hours it from, is, from it is. one it end it to the it other. In fact, it would be, wouldn't, it would actually be east of that I-65 yeah. line, and you know, I talked to my students, and how many of you all know where Adair County is? Well, they don't. Well, I said, don't worry about it. In Adair County, they don't know where McCracken County yeah. is either. Yeah. It's such a long district. Yes. Uh, but I guess the, 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 the real test of this will come whenever Whitfield uh, either resigns or, 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 yeah. st- or is defeated. Uh, well, and if you look, really, the Democrats haven't put a strong candidate since Brian Roy ran in 2000. Yeah. Uh, but the question is, if it becomes an open seat, mm-hmm. then we'll see. If the Republicans win an open seat, then you've got to say, absolutely, it has changed. Well, and, and I've asked the question uh, to a number of people, is Western Kentucky um, lost to the Democratic Party beyond, beyond um, the, uh, or, you know, above the local level? Right. Because, you know, you, see, you look around and you see, uh, for example, in Hopkins County, Madisonville, you know, people were startled when, uh, um, you know, Hopkins County went for Rand Paul, um, you know, voted against their incumbent Democratic senator who, who only only uh, was, was reelected because of Muhlenberg County uh, voting for him. And at the state legislative, you know, at the representative level, um, you know, they, they uh, voted in a Republican. So mm-hmm. you see that kind of thing going you on. You do. All and over and the and area. And another thing, too, what fascinates me about about current politics is Rand Paul in November of 2010 wins this just whopping yeah. victory. And if the polls are right, uh, uh, David Williams is going to get just yeah. slaughtered. Yeah. And it's it's what fascinating is voter behavior. These are the same people who went to the voting booth in, in last year that are going to go this year. Yeah. And it, it's it's just this this hodgepodge of yeah. uh, of that, and people don't vote the straight ticket much yeah. anymore. Well, and, and Governor Bashir does have some roots in Western Kentucky, from being old, from Dawson, Dawson Springs. Springs. He does. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it is it is very very interesting to see uh, you know 
there are those who would say Rand Paul, you know, is a bit of a carpetbagger, although he he would say that uh, you know um, he, he that he was. Um, but uh, you know that issue doesn't seem to resonate anymore no, uh, no. in the case of Ed Whitfield, and no. and that charge was was put against him time yeah. and time again. Did no good. People yeah. say he doesn't even have a house in Hopkinsville. Well, and, and the last election, you know, in that Senate election, you know, was such an anti-incumbent, anti-Obama, uh, anti-health care mm -hmm. um, election that it was, you know, it was, it was perfect for, for Rand Paul. Now, the test to me, uh, you know, one of the interesting things is, you know, for a Kentucky U.S. Senator or Congressman, you campaign against Washington. Mm -hmm. But once you go to Washington, right, um, then you try to bring, you know, the goodies back. Exactly. And exactly. I, I mean, yeah. I, yeah. Well, one you know, of the, the secrets the is that for every dollar that we send to Washington, we get about a dollar and a half back. Right. And you know, yeah. um, Rand Paul, you know, and I have to give him credit. He he's he's a man of his word. I've you know, apparently when you go to see him and ask him for something, he wants to know where you can cut, to you know, in you know, for every dollar. You know, he wants to know where you, where else you're going to cut, so he's, uh, he's, you know, he's walked the walk. Uh, we're getting close to the time. Uh, anything you want to talk about the book? I've obviously, people you, you see, you seek help from people. Uh, maybe give a contact number if somebody wants to chip in or give you a lead on something. Um, sure. Um, of course, the easiest thing is a is a email address, and that would be George G E O R G E dot H U M P H R E Y S at K C T C S dot E D U. Yeah. And you'll be uh, I'm sure crossing and crisscrossing the region oh, uh, yes. yeah. doing this. Uh, this has to be uh, a labor of love because you won't get rich at this. This book <laughs> won't be a, a you know it, it, not like Stephen Ambrose. Yeah. So obviously so so well, in, how in, do we, you know I haven't I haven't gotten my advance yet. Well, th that's right. <laughs> uh, but in, in 30 seconds, really what motivated you to do this? Well, um, I, I, you know, I'm from Fulton County. I didn't live here very long. And I really did see a need for uh, this area to get a little, uh, little more attention to, uh, you know, to step up, you know, in, in, in the state and be recognized for the importance of the region, in, in, you know, in Kentucky and national politics. Mm -hmm. I think it, it's a it's a wonderful topic, and, and as I said, uh, uh, and in all fairness, uh, Frankfurt's a pretty important place, and Lexington's a pretty important place, and Louisville is too. But it's nice to at least uh, tip the hat to Western Kentucky. Oh yes, so. definitely so. We're out of time. Thank you for joining us. My Thank guest you. today was George Humphreys. I'm Barry Craig. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.